Hello, everyone. So I think it's time to start this annual Pearl Buff. Uh, so Integrity is going to note taking. I will check RC for people that are not here. Hi, people that are not here. <laughs> So uh, maybe on IRC, uh, people here for the buff can wave or something. Oh, there's no stream. Hmm. There should be a stream. Oh, you mean uh, maybe Gregor means a stream with the screen? Okay. We, of course, have to handle the fact that the RSC is faster than the stream, so question will be maybe or comment might be flowing a bit later. Okay, so maybe the, the time difference with the stream is a bit high. Okay, so Gregor was nice enough to prepare most of the Gobi documents. And uh, okay, maybe we can start with the start of the Gobi document. <laughs> so welcome again. Maybe everyone wants to present themselves. Well, I can start. Uh, so I'm Clément Nodens, and uh, well, I'm quite new in the team. I think I joined maybe two years ago, three years ago, something like that. Uh, and I'm not a DD, but uh, well, I try to help where I can, and I also maintain a particular applet. Knock, knock. Hi, I'm Intri. I joined the team a while ago, and I'm mostly focused on removing crappy packages and maintaining uh, what you need to develop applications using modern GNOME technologies in Perl and in lightweight, modern, object-oriented, and type uh, validation systems for Perl, along with a little bit of hard, compiled, like hardening and repressible bits. And uh, my name is uh, Takatsu Nokubi. <laughs> I mainly maintain about uh, Jap Japanese text processing modules like uh, NKF or Kakashi. Uh, almost module uh, depends on other shared objects, so it is not a, uh, it, it requires some uh, architecture dependency. So it's my turn. Well, I'm just Dan. I'm just your average lowest level Perl user. 
I originally wouldn't be per, wouldn't be using. I would I'd be using Python like all the young people, but I couldn't get the Python to fit on the one liner in the main make file, so I end up using Perl, and now it's too late. Hello, I'm Rhonda. I'm using Perl since ages, like last century. <laughs> um, I never really was directly part of the Perl team, but more or less always scanning around and I'm maintaining the IRC pod for, for DEPCONF, which is written in Perl. And I'm starting a new job in September, which also will contain a lot of Perl, so I maybe be more tightly connected in the future. Apparently, no one wants to introduce themselves in on IRC. Maybe we will. Well, you can come back to that if needed. But just, just for the sake of people here on stream who don't follow IRC, we have a bunch of people there: Carnil, Dem, Gregor, uh, Nicotini, and Xavier Guimar. Here's my issue. <laughs> my issue is, see, I use both the experimental and the unstable Debian versions. And all the time, every time I use aptitude, there's always some gunk about Perl not being fully ready to get installed. Only about half the days of the year is it finally all up to date. Otherwise, there's always some holding pieces falling back. And I was hoping you got to get your act together and update the whole thing at the same time and not have pieces dragging around. So it's always having some gunk and aptitude is not resolved. Is there any possibility you could please do that? can say he had the same issue, but okay. And, uh, maybe that would be interesting to specifically uh, say well, whenever it happens to you, maybe note it, file a bug somewhere, or talk well, about it on RC. I did, and they said that because I use experimental, I should be used to the problem and not complain about it. I suspect it's because when a new major version of Perl, like right now 5.28, is prepared, it's a transition, and the transition is prepared in experimental. And when it's ready, and the most of the issues have been fixed, then it's uploaded to seed and then started the migration process, transition process to te toward testing is started. So it's kind of on purpose that this is a place where issues are identified and fixed before okay. they affect everybody else. Yeah. Okay. And Tini is also commenting uh, with regard to Perl and Experimental, so it's not really feasible to have all the 600 or so Arch any packages rebuilt in Experimental at the same time. So yeah, that's mainly the issue. Okay, so this year we had a couple of sprints, one in Hamburg during mini DevConf. Uh, and the other one uh, in, during DevCamp, right, uh, right before DevCamp. So the report, um, the report uh, has been written, is available. Uh, what? So the sprint were mainly, so in Hamburg, three people attending uh, to plan for the Perl 528 transition. Add some auto PKG tests uh, or fix it when it does not work, uh, and so that they don't arm testing migration. Uh, try to fix a few bugs bluntly and mostly move to Salsa 
that was a uh, very big, uh, most of the work apparently. Uh, sadly, I did not attend. Okay, no comment on RC yet on that. And in Drake Depp Camp, well, it was mostly. Ooh, the page has not been generating, generated yet. Okay, so we have a problem with the report for the Depp Camp that we will fix. Well, we have the Gobi. Here. So yeah, it was a removal of a bunch of uh, GTK2 independent packages in uh, preparation for Buster, where GTK2 will not be available. Uh, so preparing a sub-bug. And yeah, well, some reproducible build problems, a bunch of uh, new upstream release, well, the usual. <laughs> okay. Still, have too many windows. I'm just curious if we had an equivalent Python maintainers meeting, would there be many more people or less people than this? Sorry, I did not quite get so you. Today is the Pearl maintainers meeting. Yeah. Uh, it's say in the neighboring room there's a Python maintainers meeting. Would be lots more people or less people or what? I have no idea. I think these teams are structured, organized socially very differently. And also in terms of how the maintenance of the interpreter itself and the maintenance and the library modules are done or coordinated or working together, I think it's quite different. I'm not sure we can compare. But we later during this buff, we will provide some statistics about how many people do some metrics. Mm, and you can ask the other guys and, okay, and non-guys how it is for them, and you can compare. I'm curious of the results. Oh, yeah, I'm just curious. It's just, it seems like these two things are the most closely overlapping in functionality, and I was curious if we have a new user coming in and they only have time to learn one and not the other. Should they learn Python or is any? Yeah, that's So regarding the sprint in Hamburg, uh, Gregor was commenting that so it was, yes, three people, Dom and Tini and him. Uh, Dom and Tini were mostly working on 528 20, um, release. And uh, Gregor was mainly fixing, uh, well, was fixing way too many aliots to salsa documentation things. And his feeling was it was very productive, but more people would have been nice. Uh, to which Tini agree. And Carnil was also there, but mostly as a security print. So he was not able to contribute very productively. And regarding DebCamp, we were uh, maybe four, four people participated in person here. Very few team members attended DebCamp this year for very diverse reasons. Yeah. And well, from my vantage point, it was also very productive, and more people would have been nice. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, well, so far, I think we can still say it's successful, but, yeah, we need to have more people in sprints. Yeah, and Gregor is commenting on the Debcom sprint, so he tried to follow, but it was, of course, a bit difficult because he had to work and time zone difference, but uh, it did help him and motivate him to work from home. And thank you for that, Gregor. <laughs> okay, apart from sprints, we also have low hanging food session, so they happen every month, on the 21st of every month. 
uh, I think, if I remember correctly, yeah, the alternating, we alternate the time between. Oh, yes, looking forward. True. Okay, back to that. So, plans for next year? Well, I guess it's very probable that we will have a sprint at DevCamp. The question is will there be another Pearl Stream uh, sprint? And where and when? I think there were also people at uh, the Snow Camp. But apparently not from the Pearl team. Okay. No proposition. Well, I know I don't have any apart from the Debcom. It's usually really complicated for me to have another sprint during the year. Let's see if we have. Ah, <laughs> yeah, Gregor has a bit uh, as a stream. Problem. Well, not problem, but delay. I won't do any logistic work, and it's unlikely I manage to attend, but I feel that, that it's easier and it probably increases the chances that more people can attend by piggy piggybacking on an existing event like was done in Hamburg. Yes, okay, so Gregor is uh, saying that there will be another MIDI DEPCAM in Hamburg, so yes, that's a very good candidate for having a sprint. For people that can go there. And it will happen uh, early June at the Pentecost weekend, so from 5th to 9th apparently, but that has to be uh, verified. You can probably ask. Uh, Olga would know about it. So Anthony said that having the Spring at Hamburg worked quite nicely to him, but a uh, separate sprint would be fine for him. Well, I personally think it's easier to gather people if there are also another event. I agree with you. And Gregor. Agrees with Antony. <laughs> okay. So low hanging food session. So the LHF, LHF sessions uh, will happen each month so on the 21st, alternating between 5 UTC and uh, 7 UTC. Well, uh, 17 and 19 UTC. So, of course, Times of difference, we alternate because we realized it's uh, even if most uh, contributors and participants of the team are in Europe, it might be easier uh, for some if it's at 5 UTC, even if it's maybe, well, I know it's harder for me when it's at 5 because uh, I'm usually not out from work. Uh, but well, did anyone here, well, beside me, uh, attended at this one LHF this year? I don't, don't recognize the technique. Okay, no. So this year, 10 happened. Two were cancelled for lack of participants. In uh, the two previous year, it was uh, eight happening in 2015-2016 and two cancelled, and in 2016-17, it was 11 happening and two cancelled. So, 10 this year is not too bad, it's in the, we're in the middle. Uh, on average, on the other side, we have uh, the participation is getting lower, because we have an average of three participants, and uh, in 2015-16, uh, it was, 625 participants and 572 in 2016-17. Uh, so yeah, uh, all in all, uh, so the topics are, it's uh, low hanging fruit. So we try to do all the maintenance stuff, so the, the things that needs to be done regularly, new option release, adopting package, fix bugs, add auto PKG tests, and sometimes 
different stuff like uh, QA cross packages. Or it's a discussion like this year, it was a lot uh, about uh, migration to Salsa, which was also a lot of work. So next year, well, I think we should continue and maybe try to recruit more people. Uh, maybe south on the times they happen. I mean, we uh, do that on the 21st of each month. That way it's not always the same day of the week. So there's more chances. If you can't a specific date, you can another day. Anyone having any comment on that? Do we continue like we do? I'm OK with that. But uh, even if the timing is not perfect for me, it means I can at least attend a few per year. I didn't manage to attend any last year, but just r being able to read the uh, the report, the list of things that people have worked on has helped me keep in stay in touch with the team and helped me motivate myself to do some work in the, 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 in the following days after the session I had missed. So even for people who are not here, it might be useful. Yeah, I agree. Now, I mean, if it's too frustrating to have these with only so few people or depressing, I won't be the one blocking if we decide, I decide to stop them. OK. And Tini is OK with the current scheduling? Dan says a fixed schedule with alternating hours seems to work nice. And Gregoire say for him, 21st is fine. So I guess we have a, cons a consensus on keeping things as they are. OK. Uh, but Gregor is also wondering if we should change to one fixed time. Yeah, well, I have personally no strong feeling about it. Uh, well, I know that it did happen often for me this year that uh, it was either the wrong day or the wrong time. But uh, I mean, that's just uh, bad luck. So, yeah, I would say keep it like it, like this. Yeah, the in, uh, maybe the question is whether the uh, initial reason why we had these different times still holds. I'm not sure in terms of the current uh, team composition, but still having different times and being open to more different time zones may help potential new members. Exactly. <laughs> it's be welcoming. And yeah, Dam is also wondering why changing the to one fixed time. Go is fine, but he's wondering if five UTC is early for some. Yeah, well, I I'm don't think we can find a better arrangement, personally. I mean, the, it works certain times. It does not work. Uh, otherwise, it would have been uh, even less participation, probably. Yeah, well, Grego is uh, coming to the same conclusion on RC. OK, let's move on to team status and some stats for last year. So last year, uh, so we have a script uh, in the scripts repository at the root of the Perl group uh, Salsa project. Well, uh, Perl Salsa, uh, Salsa group. And uh, so. We have 60 people with at least one commit in the last uh, year. It was uh, 58 in 2014, 15, 60, uh, 56 in 2015, 17, 54 in 2016, 17. So it's pretty stable. Uh, 19 people with more than 100 commits. So yes, we can tell that it's uh, only a third of the active people. And usually, 
usually every year we have another script to, and try to ping inactive member to ask them if they still want to be in the team. But since we moved to Salsa this year, we did move only the people that were active, so don't really need to do that. <laughs> Okay, well, the, it's Gregor says that the ICS file for the LHF is good until uh, 2038, so let's not change it. <laughs> okay, no more comment on that. Uh, so, Perl 528, uh, it's in the work. So we have uh, a bug, a transition bug, to keep track of it. 902.557, if anyone wants to have a look. Uh, we have the rebuild logs and uh, rebuild package repo on perl.debian.net. And there's also a Gobi page uh, in, expo in uh, team Perl, Perl 528 QA coordination. So far, good people are adding stuff on the Gobi because I did not follow that very closely. So only two non-blockers are left in uh, UWSGI and CollegD, but no archive-wide uh, archive rebuild yet due to lack of resource. This space on Perl.debian.net. Can this be fixed with Debian sponsorship? I think that would be a good idea to at least ask. Um, let's, uh, could the people maintaining Perl.debian.net tell us if it could be fixed with Debian sponsorship? Yep. Uh, and there was uh, um, roughly 3,000 reverse dependencies of Perl test rebuild continuously since the print, sprint in May. a bit to see for the streaming delay to see if someone wants to comment on RFC. can go back to that if needed. Uh, so the next uh, item is the migration from Alioth to Salsa. So, uh, well, so we migrated in May. I think it went quite nicely. So most of the problems were actually to change all the, our documentation and a lot of scripts uh, that handle all the repository, and we're still kind of working on that. Gregoire was uh, making some, well, making some optimization in the Armour config, for instance. I, I don't know if a lot of people use Armour. I know that uh, Gregoire and I do to have all the repository up to date and not update all the repository every time that which is not nice uh, on your machine or on Salsa. <laughs> ah, we have more comment on, uh, more comment on the transition. So Anthony says uh, we should go ahead anyway, since uh, once the uh, non-bugs are fixed. Uh, I'm okay with that. <coughs> And any objection? I think going ahead means uploading to seed. Yes. So apparently no one's strongly against.
And Anthony says that if we skip the full archive rebuild, it will take maybe a couple of weeks. Because both uh, blockers have fixes and workarounds. Okay, so maybe we could, yeah, of course, it depends on the release team. Uh, but maybe we could uh, check uh, with Dom uh, this, uh, this space problem, see if we can do something about it. And uh, if it's nothing easy or trivial, let's uh, go, for the, go for it. Well, we'll put that in the report and ask for a comment on the mailing list. I mean, not everyone can attend the both. Other people might have things to say about that. Uh, we have 15 minutes left. We have 15 minutes left. Okay. I think we're on time. So back to the migration to Al to Salsa. Uh, so yeah, most of. Uh, I think most of our documentation, including infrastructure and stuff, is now fixed. Uh, we still have no real replacement for PET, which is a shame, but uh, fortunately, Tracker is going to have the feature we need the most. So, you know, well, can I sure is monitoring a Google Summer of Code? Uh, Arthur to do that and from what we saw uh, it looks good so I think we will be able to manage without pets and it will actually be better I think but mm, for that I'm very I'm personally very happy with Salsa and the, all the ni shiny new features it had Is anyone missing uh, something from from Salsa? Something we should fix, maybe? Oh, and Gregory is saying about missing pet. Please try DPT new upstream in PKG Pearl Toolgate. Thanks, Gregory. I will. <laughs> So, uh, and Gregor thinks there is still a script to clean up local repos uh, that is still tied to Alioth. FSFS script. So we have to check that. Well, do we really need it? And uh, should we replace it? I have no idea what it does. Me neither. I did I'm not fine. even know it existed. But uh, if help is needed on that, well, uh, I can have a look. Oh, and Gregor is wondering if it's possible to turn off project creation via the web interface. You might be able to do that with permissions. Uh, Uh, yeah, I would have to check uh, GitLab documentation. I'm not sure. Because, yeah, when, uh, whenever one creates a project on Salsa using the web interface, uh, it creates it all wrong. Because we have uh, all the projects will have the same settings, and uh, so there's a script to do that uh, in the PKGPL tools. It's DPT Salsa uh, create repo. And yeah, anyone really needs to use this uh, to create a new, whenever a new package is created. Unless project creation does the right thing. Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, there are 
it would, it would, it would be actually nice to disable project creation from, from the web because, it, well, I don't think it's possible to automate all the stuff regarding permission. It's possible to, to have them inherit properly, but uh, all the settings with all the webhooks uh, for the KGB bot and stuff like that, uh, yeah, I don't think it's possible. And then, well, it's difficult to know which project, if some projects is, are created uh, with a web interface, it's difficult to know which projects are okay with regard to salsa config or, and which are not. So, so yeah, I can, uh, I can check the GitLab thing and uh, ask the value of admins. I guess that's it for Salsa. And, and Gregor is uh, commenting that uh, the script he was talking about before creates repos, uh, well, removes repos from your hard disk, uh, which are removed from Alioth for remove package. So, okay, well, that might be useful. Uh, so yeah, maybe, maybe we should uh, that. Well, it's especially useful for people like me who use uh, MR and have all the repos on the disk. I mean, if people are just uh, getting only the Git repos and they work on, then they probably don't need that. So probably not a lot of people are using that. I'm using that, but I'm not going to invest time to optimize for by 2% uh, the MR runtime or disk usage. Ack. <laughs> okay, so, well, last item. Projects for next time, items for discussion. Uh, so yeah, we had ideas in the Debcam sprint, so well, I'm going to investigate this uh, GitLab things to check if we can do that. Uh, and so there are, yes, uh, there was this uh, hardening flag status. Uh, we we have uh, in our LHF uh, checklist, we have uh, hardening flags, uh, items that not a lot of people know about. And every time I look at it, I have to think, oh, what was it already? Just about adding the hardening flags to every project uh, on uh, Debian rules using a developer option. Mm, so the idea is to make that systematic. And yeah, well, we can continue doing that uh, as we did. That is, uh, I mean, I do it every time I look at the package. Uh, maybe we can do some kind of mass uh, hardening activation. Now that uh, Salsa is in good shape, it will probably be easier. And we definitely want to remove, finish the removal of the libgtk 2 Perl dependencies. That's on its way. So we can only hope it will be done for the freeze. Uh, and yes, there will be the patch replacement. I think next year we'll probably also have to think about the mailing list because uh, we have a replacement for the Elliot list, but it's uh, normally it will, well, we might have to change again, switch to something else. Uh, for instance, using Tracker 
after Buster is released for because we don't know how long this will be maintained. Dom was saying it will be okay to maintain it for release plus one or two, but no more. So we will have to think about that in advance so that it's not too painful. But man, if we that can be any time for next year, both. Uh, Personally, I have no other proposition. Let's see if they have some on RC. What happens sometimes is that with uh, this kind of discussion actually happens after the buff when we have the report and people reply in the mailing list, <laughs> which is not so bad. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, and Tini is uh, saying that changing the maintainer field in all our packages is going to be painful in any case. That is true. But we will probably have to do it at some point. So probably look at the options like using tracker instead of uh, a mailing list. Gregor is, is asking if anyone has ideas to, on how to motivate more people to run auto PKG test before uploading. Oh, I think maybe Intri has an idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we can always try to do that with a CI, but that will be painful with a lot of packages. I don't think this will impact the problem Gregor is talking about. I think that the main problem is I git pull, update to new from release, upload, and by the time the CI would run the auto package test, the package is already accepted in and since it. So it's, yeah. I guess that, I mean, the fact that, for example, running auto package test is a one line config setting to enable in S build, maybe not very well advertised, maybe. Whoever, fix the documentation. <laughs> whoever uh, set this up locally should could identify issues in the doc and maybe update it or improve it. I don't know. Mm. I think maybe we could start by asking people who don't do it why they don't do it. There's probably a reason. And then we'll fix it. Indeed, we can ask on the mailing list, I guess. Does anyone use or don't use it to pick a GTS for a particular reason? The pull packages they, use, they maintain? I know I do use it now that I have a working setup. Yeah, Dam is uh, suggesting something triggered by an uh, unstable commit of the changelog. I wonder if we can have a message from Salsa whenever whenever we push, like, have you run the PKG test? <laughs> and trigger is uh, 
pushing to us is uh, a demonstration of using the GitLab pipelines and the CI. But yeah, as he was saying, it might happen too late often. I mean, uh, the default OpenKG tests we have are not very complicated or anything, but they are still useful. <laughs> Thanks everyone for participating and thanks especially to those uh, who were in Europe and had to wake up at uh, crazy hours to attend remotely. Thank you. Thank you.